uh, first of all, I don't, I'm not able to see what's there behind me. I'll keep turning around to look at it just to make sure that I'm, or the guys there are in sync with what I'm speaking. Uh, it's nice to be here. Thanks to uh, the Chanakya Forum to have uh, uh, a private industry on board uh, for having a talk. You've been having a lot of the government in, uh, officials here. I'm semi-government. Yeah, I, I belong to the DRDO, but Brahmos is owned by the government of India and the government of Russia. So we are a private limited company registered in India, which is something which uh, is a very rare thing. I'll be touching upon that also as we talk, because the journey of Brahmos is a very interesting journey, uh, which is akin to many of the things which have happened in the past and uh, which actually is attached to a few of the events which have ha happened in the past. Uh, shall we go to the next slide? It's a very mundane slide. I mean, I, I have a few slides which are even more mundane than this, just a few lines, <laughs> which, which are because being a specific uh, talk and uh, uh, trying to get uh, forward a message, uh, I thought I'll try to make it in a little different way. So there are some which have pictures, some which are just lines. But uh, what I wanted to tell you is warfare is at the forefront of civilization. And all of us, of course, who read, uh, uh, if there is any activity as old as human civilization, it is warfare or conflict. I mean, I know uh, naughty people would have had other ideas also. But <laughs> yes, conflict has always been uh, one of the things. And the race on the battlefield to be one up on your opponent, on your competition, is what has uh, made the actual fighter or the warrior to become an inventor. And that was the evolution of warfare over the years. Uh, one of the uh, small things which I like to have and which I like to keep is uh, what happened in this uh, 18th century, the early or middle 18th century, when the French and the British were actually fighting over the uh, riches of the Indian subcontinent. They came up against uh, uh, Tipu Sultan, uh, a much maligned mal man today, but uh, uh, he was actually the person who used the first, what we believe the first rockets in warfare. The Chinese have created rockets, they have used flaming arrows, they have used flaming spears. But as a rocket, it was uh, almost, it was something, most probably it was Tipu Sultan who used it. And mind you, Tipu Sultan had a rocketeer's division in his, in his army, about 1200 people. The Britishers, after Wil William Congreve started, uh, sometime in the early 19th century, they created their first official rocket brigade. So I'm just trying to bring that, that there is a history that the uh, that the uh, British took away from India and went back and created the rockets. Of course, I'm not going to go on a history of rocketry and what happened. That's that's, that's well known. Uh, next one, please. Uh, what we did is within India to stay ahead of uh, uh, the uh, stay ahead on the battlefield. Uh, sometime in the uh, 80s, the uh, the integrated guided missile development program was created with uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam as the uh, uh, chief or uh, ch taking care of the thing. There were five projects in that. Uh, essentially a technology demonstrator for the intercontinental uh, ballistic, uh, the surface to surface Prithvi, surface to air Akash, the surface to air Trishul and the anti-tank Nag. It was very interesting that uh, when these uh, choices were made, uh, it was made with the idea that these are technologies which we slightly we may have, we need to work on. It's a long term thing and these are weapons which we need almost immediately. But then uh, they, they worked on this. The IGMDP has been the workhorse of the DRDO for many years. I am one of the people who has worked in the IGMDP for right since my inception. And uh, till I stopped working in the IGMDP when the Brahmos program started, because Brahmos was not classically the IGMDP. Uh, next one, Sahari, if you. Uh, that's the result of the IGMDP. 
we have a huge missile showcase and uh, it's a very proud thing to say that actually speaking if you're talking about uh, ballistic missiles if you're talking about surface to air missiles if you're talking about anti tanks uh, we are totally self reliant this is because of the igmdp uh, there are a few other missiles which are added here which are the extensions of the igmdp and uh, the igmdp has actually enriched the technology of our country not just because we have missile technology we are strong it's not that I, that, that's not what i'm trying to say what i'm trying to say is the industry has grown with the integrated guided missile development program uh brahmos figures here as part of the missile showcase because yes brahmos is largely an indian uh, missile uh, next one there was a little gap when i told you about the IG, uh, igm dp was being made uh in the 90s early 90s 91 the gulf war started and uh, the uh, us unveiled the tomahawk as one of their big weapons uh, desert storm up to uh, 2003 they used approximately 1500 tomahawk missiles of course that was the first time when they did the teaming of the uh manned and unmanned uh, with the uh, f uh, 116s and uh, uh with the tomahawks the tomahawks were used massively for uh, you know uh, desert storm uh, including the presidential palace which they took out missile sites and all, all that but uh, there has been it has been seen even at that time as well as later on into the uh, later 2001 afghanistan uh, deliberate force in Bos bosnia odyssey dawn of uh, libya massive numbers of tomahawk were used and it was very clear that cruise missiles is the future of warfare uh, that's what the persian gulf wars taught us and it's very clear that the tomahawks are still in use Uh, next please so then obviously we had the igmdp we had uh, it was already on it was already moving forward but then it was very clear that india needed to work on a cruise missile now should it be a tomahawk style cruise missile or should it be something better we started looking at our partners who could be our partners and i think it was uh, but natural uh, india in those days was being pushed towards working with a partner who you can trust and uh, who can offer something which can be of use to india uh, next hari in uh, 1993 uh, that's when i made my first trip to uh, russia i was part of a small team we were working with the russians they were helping us as uh, Uh, on technical consultancy on a few of our programs i was an akash man i used to work on the surface to msl akash we were going there to actually finish off the work which we had gone to them asking for help on akash they unveiled the small missile the uh, liquid ramjet missile and they said uh, why don't we start looking at a uh, missile around this the uh, russians already did have one they had the p800 onyx which they had uh, created with this uh, uh, engine but then there were talks which started and the joint venture brahmos next slide was actually created in 1998 through a intergovernment agreement with russia where they created the brahmos aerospace to uh, design develop and market an anti ship supersonic anti ship cruise missile a very not a very large uh, uh capital uh, pushed in it was put together but the idea was that uh, the joint venture was created brahmos aerospace was created in 1998 and there have been uh, a lot of pluses after this a lot of gains lot of lot, lot of things i'm going to go into all of them uh one by one uh next one please the uh, main thing is that we were we shared the technology what have uh, there were technologies already available with india which we had worked on while we were in the igmdp 
and there were the technologies which the Russians had. We brought these to the table as process stock items. In other words, these items did not have to be developed. We didn't have to put money into this. What needed to be put, uh, done was to just design a missile around these technologies. So there was sharing of knowledge, there was sharing of technologies. Uh, we were uh, able to do things in time. Very interestingly, a company created in 1998 were able to do our first flight trial in 2001. We are talking about a supersonic cruise missile. In three years time, we were able to create our first flight trial with hardware from both the sides. Uh, it's 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 something like a, a a record, and we got our first orders from the Indian Navy uh, in 2004. So that is within six years we had our first order, and we were inducted into the Indian Navy in 2005. So uh, and then the Indian Army in 2006. The speed at which. Uh, the BrahMos missile was created and pushed into production and inducted. It was possible only because of a very interesting joint venture which was there. It's created what is known as, or what I very proudly say, a world-class product. There have been spin-offs, not to the world, not to the common man, but spin-offs to our uh, partner industries. I'll, I'll uh, touch upon that as we come. But then everyone would be asking, uh, yeah, uh, what is BrahMos? I mean, there's so much of hype. Uh, next one, Hari. Uh, we are a uh, missile, uh, universal as I use it. It's the same missile in the same form fit, which is uh, uh, launched from a ship, from the land, from underwater, uh, minus the canister, it just goes underneath an aircraft. In fact, uh, uh, I always say that uh, we are the only country with a, which has a single supersonic cruise missile on all three arms of the uh, forces, a triad of supersonic cruise missile on with the forces. This is uh, actually one of the uh, uh, unique uh, points of BrahMos that it's the same missile which you're able to use in various uh, modes. And next one, please. Uh, I would be showing a couple of videos to uh, actually energize myself. And uh, I have a story again about each and every uh, launch of BrahMos from the beginning, from the first one till I think up to the uh, uh, 20th launch. After that, I went into a few other jobs and I've come back into BrahMos only recently. But uh, we are uh, a missile which is Lethal because of its supersonic speed. Supersonic speed from uh, the moment of launch. I mean, it does take some time to reach supersonic speed, but that's only about uh, eight or nine seconds. And we are supersonic from that point till impact. Uh, there's no other missile like this. I can, I can tell you that. Uh, we are multi-platform. We are multi-trajectory. High, low 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 that is sea skimming uh, yes at, in in the uh, early uh, part of this uh, millennium we did say that there was no defense against a supersonic missile let alone a supersonic cruise missile technology moves forward so now there are defenses but uh, we'll not go into that part of it right now i mean maybe some other day we'll talk about the technologies of uh, what are there uh, we do have a possibility of uh, uh, firing in a salvo that is between one launch to the next launch from a single platform if it's a multi-platform carrying uh, thing like a ship or the uh, land launchers time between two launches seven seconds the same uh, launcher has three or four missiles we can target three or four uh, uh, targets at the same time so multi-targets what type of targets of course we are an anti-ship missile we have developed and improved ourselves over the years, gone through a uh, lot of things. Do understand, India was on the wrong side of uh, the MTCR for a very, very long time. The missile technology control regime did not allow transfer of technology to India on missile technologies for missiles greater than 300 kilometers 
carrying uh, payloads of more than 500 kilo, uh, kil kilograms. Still, you saw the missile showcase, which actually we were able to do it. And then the world started saying, hang on, these guys better be part of the MTCR. Otherwise, they might be uh, uh, ready to proliferate. India has never attacked anyone. India has never invaded anyone. India will never proliferate uh, technology without doubt because it is it's the technology is with us for our defense. We will maybe export systems to help the defense of other countries in case they are threatened by their uh, enemies or what they feel threatened with. But uh, with time, we have become MTCR signatories and hence the missile has improved in its capabilities. We don't go into what are exactly our capabilities and what exactly we are capable of. This may be because we are part of uh, a, a company which is part of uh, uh, a regime which always says that why should we let the enemies even know what we have. But we are lethal and everyone has been seeing what we are capable of. Our uh, notification to airmen and uh, the marine does give away sometimes what we are doing and what we are capable of. But uh, it's, 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 a, it's a missile which is uh, unbelievable. Uh, what we are going to show you next is uh, uh, one of the uh, first launches of BrahMos with uh, a warhead. Uh, yeah, with the warhead against a ship. Um, mind you, uh, this ship uh, XINS Androth was uh, an Indian naval ship. After the impact, the uh, there was a chopper which went and we were in constant contact with the chopper and I kept asking, VP tell me, VP tell me. I mean, we were not even talking in normal protocol. He says, I don't see the target. I don't see the target. Then they found a Gemini which was about a kilometer away where we had some Marcos. They are the ones who took this video. Uh, he says, we spotted the Gemini but we don't see the target. That means target is definitely down. Five minutes, sir. Five minutes for a ship to go down. The Marcos were uh, unbelievably happy and they said that, uh, give me this weapon. I want to go. I want to go east. I want to go uh, west. I want to take this out and uh, show it to the world. But yes, <clears throat> we have done a proof of concept. We have taken our missile and gone underwater. Uh, 30 meters and launched this missile, proving to the Indian Navy as well as to the world that the same missile in the same configuration in the same canister is capable of an underwater launch. We have uh, done the design for putting it onto submarines. Now it's up to the submarine designers and the Indian Navy to tell us uh, we want BrahMos. Uh, BrahMos is a conventional warhead. We have never ever decided to use a nuclear tipped warhead because we want BrahMos to be used to defend our country. It will be a, a weapon which can and can and will be used by our armed forces if and when they desire and need it to be used. The uh, strategic missiles will never be used. Those are deterrents. This is a tactical deterrent. This is a missile which will deter our enemies don't come near, we will be able to take out your assets at fairly long distances without your even being able to retaliate. And it's not nuclear. Yeah, we have a land-to-land -land launch. This is done from, in fact, very interestingly, Port Blair. must tell you these are all fairly old launches these are about uh, I would say oh, the, the ship launch which you saw was about uh, 20 years ago these launches about uh, 10 12 years ago I was still part of the working 
uh, working uh, boys of Brahmos, I spent time on this island just to see what it looks like and what it be like. So for me, this is you know a very emotional time to even see this video, even though it's after such a long time. Uh, we have, as I said, we have worked on the air launch version. We have a wonderful squadron Tiger Sharks in uh, based in Tanjavur, the south of India, and a Brahmos missile on the Su-30. We have the heaviest. That was a ship which was, uh, yeah, 300 kilometers away from the uh, launch aircraft. We are a uh, gravity drop missile. We are not hot launched, so we fall by gravity and then start. Launching. Next one, please. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you that uh, the Brahmos missile is the forefront, forerunning weapon of the Indian Navy. They have declared it as their frontline uh, weapon. It's not very far away when the Indian Air Force will say that this is the weapon which we want for, uh, for always. Yes, we are a heavy missile. The Su-30 carries only one. So this is the heaviest weapon which is being carried by the Su-30 today. It may be one of the heaviest weapons carried under the belly or under the wing of a, a fighter aircraft, but uh, the Su-30 is refuelable. And uh, that means the Su-30 can fly anywhere into the world. In other words, this lethal missile can be delivered to any point of the globe today. Uh, we did start off Brahmos with the idea that we would be uh, we are a concept within the mind which would go into the market, market being the Indian Armed Forces. Uh, time has gone by, we have done a lot of work, a lot of people interested and uh, we got our first uh, order, an international order. In fact, the very first uh, uh, big order which the Indian government or the Indian uh, defense industry has got for a major weapon system, January of last year, uh, the uh, it was an honor to sign this uh, contract with the uh, Philippines uh, Department of National Defense, uh, uh, three coastal batteries for the Philippines Marine Corps. We are in the process of uh, uh, executing this contract. The first deliveries will start by the end of this year and uh, the system should be operational uh, fairly soon after that. We've already started the training of their personnel. We have started the work on the ground at their place. And uh, very soon, the West Philippine Sea will be a safer place for uh, the Philippines. There are many more countries who are in, uh, in, uh, interested in the BrahMos missile. We are in talks with them. It's not easy to sell uh, this missile. It's uh, saleable only to countries uh, who are acceptable to both India and Russia. We do need the permission of both the governments to sell this missile. That does limit the number of uh, countries we can go to, but the south east of Asia is acceptable to the whole world because everyone does want to make sure that the West Philippine Sea or all what all the uh, sea which is there is actually a free flowing, happily uh, marketable, navigatable sea for the world. The Middle East and uh, the uh, Latin American countries are also interested because there was a day when uh, it was way back in 2001, end of 2001, beginning of 2002, when a, a, a European naval chief, we explained the whole concept to him in, a, in an exhibition at Lankavi in Malaysia. And uh, he says, my God, you, you, you have a concept, will it really work? I was a young boy and I said, it will work, I'll make sure and we'll make sure it works. We've actually proven that it works now. He says, I don't want to be on the wrong side of this weapon. I want to be on the right side. I want this on my ship. Well, uh, he's never going to get it because uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an Indo-Russian joint venture. But uh, 
everyone wants this missile and if they are capable of having it it, they, it will be there uh next one hari uh, i will be going a little faster now i spent a lot of time but uh, i wanted to make sure that uh, all of you are aware that this is a actually live and kicking article which is actually working uh, we have done only 34 development trials our uh, indian armed forces have done their own user trials in fact we were just talking about it uh, over tea they keep doing trials and uh, to date 106 brahmos missiles have been launched brahmos missiles i'm talking about have been launched and uh, all of them have gone to their targets uh, in fact there are a lot of other stories also but uh, that's a little different uh, from the day one when we started uh, the brahmos aerospace it was decided that we are going to involve the indian industry this is the biggest gain which actually the joint venture has created industries were identified right at the beginning and we had already created what we called the uh, public private industry partnership which we wanted to use for production of the brahmos missile today we have got even very small industries directly uh, delivering items to brahmos aerospace for the integration into the missile there are uh, a few major public uh, sector uh, units and uh, a few major private industries also but uh, more than 200 sms uh, uh, smes and uh, i would say more than 600 uh, industries altogether working as the part of the supply chain of uh, brahmos what I, it is what i call the brahmos missile industry consortium it this was actually created uh, well before the clarion call of atmanirbharta bharat uh, but uh, this is what the whole uh, uh country is now trying to uh, emulate and make sure that we the industry within india is able to contribute to the production of all mis- uh, weapon systems in the country as far as possible it's not possible for a country to be totally self sufficient Let, let's let's take it at that but we should be as far as possible self sufficient and uh, we would not be able to then fall into a situation which we have had at some time er- uh, earlier uh next one hari if i can uh, this thing uh it's something which i call the brahmos way uh it's when we started it was the only uh, company which actually thought of you know doing its work right from raw material to the integration of the missile everyone else who integrates missiles in our country today gets a lot of free issue material that is from someone or the other as a free issue material or uh, i mean that the fim is very well known among all of you uh it's been a strong long term practical vision with a belief in innovation uh we have followed in those days the concurrent engineering principles because we are an old uh, model we are not uh, part of the new thing when we are going for our new things we will be doing it in a little different way but the various uh, visions which the leaders had before me and which i hope to hold a candle to uh, in the, in the future uh, is the success of this joint venture we have a long way to go we have done a lot we have a long way to go we are funded by two different governments yet we we uh, operate as a private limited company that gives us the chance to work at speed with with absolute speed of course the uh, execution of the tasks and the autonomous auto or uh, operation actually helps us in doing things really fast and that's why that speed at which we have been able to reach where we are right now it's not easy for such a, a young uh, company to have uh, an order book which we started with uh, uh, i must tell you we uh, the infusion of uh, capital into the company was 300 million dollars today brahmos has an order book of approximately 6 billion dollars and uh, we hope that it would be about 10 to 11 billion dollars by in, in another 5 years time so it is a a, a, a psychology a unique uh, venture which has actually moved our indian industry into a higher gear 
next one these are the mundane slides i was talking about that it's just uh, ungrazy but uh, i wanted it to be there to actually uh, explain that our industries have actually gained uh, in a lot of ways we have been able to create lot within our country different alloys which were never done within our place uh, we've got chemicals which have been created in, within india uh, as part of the indigenization process bramos has stood for indigenization right from day one we started low in within the missile today we are way ahead in the missile in terms of indigenization manufacturing technology in our country has increased next slide please uh, there's been uh, an actual du during the uh, creation and working of bramos there been there's been an actual networking of r&d academy and the industry r&d of the of our russian partners our uh, drdo be it the uh, young boys with me there's been hand holding of the industries right from the inception to the point of where they are able to give us our subsystems mind you bramos aerospace is a private limited company it's an industry which does the integration of the missiles on our own we get inputs of technology in terms of uh, uh, subsystems initially from our partners but after that we have been self sufficient uh, as i had already told you about our achievement in terms of finance but i must also tell you that uh, our shareholders uh, the government of india and the government of russia have not taken back a single penny or rupee from bramos as profit whatever uh, resource or uh, funds generation have been there have stayed back with bramos and those have been plowed back into r&d this is uh, an example i want to give to the rest of the uh, industries of india be, the, be them either defense or even civil that it is this which has to be plowed back into the r&d we cannot keep expecting uh, giveaways from the government that i want to do this please give me a grant please uh, give me a help we need to get it done from within the companies ourselves as far as possible we need to plow back our uh, 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 interest in r&d uh, next please uh, everyone i mean i should have put this earlier but i had left it uh, towards the end it's a proud moment again once more to tell you there is no supersonic cruise missile in the world today whoever pretends to be a supersonic cruise missile is subsonic and they become supersonic only towards the end of their uh, uh, trajectory towards the end of their profile all the others are all all of them are subsonic everyone would say why then what's the necessity of supersonic what what there then i would ask the next question why is everyone making such a hue and cry about the hypersonics and then obviously supersonics is just a stepping stone to hypersonics there is no comparison of bramos we are a triad we have a triad of missiles the same missile the same technology on all the three forces land sub sea sea uh, airborne uh, and uh, i mean uh, attacking various type of targets all other missiles are only for either a particular type of launch vehicle or a particular type of targeting next please we have been an innovative model we are a supersonic cruise missile we have the universality that's the innovation which our product is we have been able to deliver with speed with speed in the sense in terms of uh, uh, time it's this organizational innovation which has been there which has helped us to do our work in time deliver in time and whatever the uh, users have needed it has been there we have created the military industrial uh, consortium which has been required to develop and produce this missile there has been a lot of technology innovation uh, it's been unbelievable we have been working together uh, i have been working together i must say and uh, my colleagues as well as the people before me who have already superannuated we have worked our lives on uh, this particular missile there has been a trust created with our partners it's no more a business it's actually no more a business uh, people may say that uh, do we or do we not work with such partners 
bring me another partner who can work like this with us who will give this sort of a technology i will say yes i shall work with them but i will always remember that this is a partnership which we started with and this is a partnership can which can only grow we do have had a lot of business in innovation over the time we have been able to uh, look at uh, a lot of uh, participation from our users and we have had uh, a massive uh, uh, work on product support in fact uh, we have a track record of giving product support to our users and keeping the system up without it being ever non functional for less than 72 hours 72 hours is the minimum downtime of any system which is there with our users right now uh it's been next next uh, hari it's it's again looks like a very mundane slide but it's just a small statement i want to say is that brahmos the indian russian joint venture is a weapon system which has been created due to the shared visions of both our countries we have harnessed the best of technologies we have harnessed the best of scientific minds we have in fact harnessed the best of business senses between us uh we have actually proven that india can leap frog from just being a buyer to a developer and uh, we are capable of moving from not only developing and producing but we can even export to the world this has been a a, a win win situation for both our countries actually and more so for india without doubt uh next slide everyone does ask what is brahmos now going to do next you have done so much we are going to be making a missile which is smaller than brahmos it's exactly the brahmos half the size of brahmos i call it the next generation uh, i don't want to leave the name brahmos because it has become a brand name it is a brand name all over the world we are a trademark symbol now so uh, it, it can be used by anyone else as such but uh, the next generation missile we would be carrying uh, up to two missiles under the wing of an aircraft be it the su-30 be it the uh, lca tejas or any of the other aircraft which means we are going to be uh, force multiplying like uh, very hugely we do expect i mean this is the business sense which we are planning it's a miniaturized brahmos whatever is there today it's the miniaturized one and uh, we have the uh, a uh, hope that we would be able to bring this out to the world into the world market uh, within another 2 years time we have already finished work on the uh, preliminary design we'll be doing trials by the end of next year start production based on orders from our indian armed forces and move forward from there everyone does ask uh, what else everyone does ask hypersonics uh I do claim that this particular missile. Everyone keeps asking, "What is this? We call the advancements, the improvements. Is it just range? Is it is is it is it uh, is it your capabilities? The enhancement does it mean range only? Uh, please understand, it's not just range which is important for a missile. It's the speed also. The current uh, conflicts of the world have told us that supersonics may not be enough. Brahmos will be looking at a Mac 5, Mac 4 and half to Mac 5 variant as a stepping stone towards the actual hypersonic missile. Uh, do understand Brahmos is not a technology company. We are uh, a venture which takes technology from both our uh, designers, puts it together and creates an article over it. It's the technology bricks which we need from our uh, partners. once they give it to us then we uh, partners being both drdo and uh, uh russia once they work out the technologies and they give it to us we will be designing a missile around it this is the future which we are looking at and uh, gung ho we are going forward we are we are going to be going forward and we're going to see a lot thank you very much jai hind